Just moments ago, Chinese leader Xi Jinping arrived in Moscow for a three-day state visit. This is his first visit to Russia since Russia invaded Ukraine. And later this morning, he will hold a one-on-one -on -one meeting with Vladimir Putin. This is Western leaders grow very wary of the two nations deepening cooperation. Ivan Watson joins us live from Kharkiv, Ukraine. Ivan, thank you very much for, for being with us. This is such a significant meeting, and it comes just on the heels of President Putin going to Mariupol right after he visited Crimea and Rostovan. Uh, there is so much at, at stake here, and the West obviously very concerned, even though China is billing this as a mission of peace. Right. And the Ukrainians watching this very nervously. And that's because uh, Xi Jinping and Vladimir Putin, uh, they keep talking about their friendship with no limits, this incredible, uh, uh, basically, alliance between Russia and China. Uh, Xi Jinping sent a letter to Russian state media before this trip. He says this is the 10th time he's visiting Russia be since he became president. It'll be his 40th meeting with Vladimir Putin, he had some digs in his letter, thinly veiled at the U.S., complaining about hegemony and, and calling for a more democratic, multipolar world. What he did not mention at all was Russia's invasion of Ukraine a year ago and the ongoing war. Instead, Xi Jinping referred to this as the Ukraine crisis and claimed that Beijing is neutral in this, that he wants peace negotiations and dialogue. Uh, he has yet to speak directly with the Ukrainian president, Volodymyr Zelensky, since Russia's invasion a year ago. And when it comes to the International Criminal Court issuing an arrest warrant on Friday against Vladimir Putin for alleged war crimes, well, the Chinese foreign ministry has weighed in on that. Uh, it is calling for the ICC to be objective and impartial, to respect the jurisdictional immunity enjoyed by a head of state, and to avoid politicization and double standards. So take that into con context when you uh, discuss China's claimed neutrality in this war. And China has at no point throughout this war uh, condemned Russia's invasion of Ukraine. They remain a huge buyer of Russian oil, helping finance all of this. And one of the things that the West, and John Kirby here uh, in the U.S., at the White House has been warning against is if China were to come out after this visit, Ivan and... and uh, say, well, there should be a, a peace deal right now, that would not be palatable by Ukraine in the West, given that Russia has taken more territory than when this all began. Sure, and has uh, declared that it is annexing Ukrainian territory right. seized uh, since the, the invasion of last year. And to underscore that, you had Vladimir Putin on Saturday, fresh from this ICC arrest warrant, visiting the Russian-occupied uh, Ukrainian city of Mariupol. He, the Kremlin says he landed by helicopter. He drove himself into the outskirts of that shattered city and visited an apartment building that the Russian government just built. While he's meeting with with some of the residents there, Poppy, mm -hmm. you hear a voice off camera that our linguists say uh, somebody was yelling, this is all a show, it's not true. Uh, this time last year, the Russian military had encircled that city and was bombing it from land, sea, and air, destroying much of it. And I was interviewing residents who were fleeing, who described spending weeks under bombardment, terrified, hiding in basements, burying neighbors who got killed by Russian artillery in the front yards of their apartment buildings. And I spoke to one of the women I met a year ago who escaped. She's living, she's a refugee overseas. She said seeing Vladimir Putin in her hometown is like seeing a serial killer wow. return to the scene of the crime. Yeah, of, of course it is, and that, that really says it all. Ivan Watson, thank you for the reporting from Kharkiv. Talk to us about what you expect from these three days, given the fact that China, that Xi Jinping just said moments ago, reiterated his willingness uh, to work with Vladimir Putin to, quote, safeguard the international order. This is after Putin, just before invading Ukraine, talked about their relationship, these two leaders, as a no-limits partnership. That's right. I, I worry about two different things here. The first Ivan raised before, which is, do we see arms? And, you know, basically, do we see the Chinese getting further into this war? I think the second thing to look for is whether or not in some kind of 
peace proposal for an armistice or a ceasefire, essentially the Chinese come in on the side of the Russians to try to cement the gains that they have right now. And that's why uh, you're hearing from the Americans and from President Zelensky and Ukrainians great concern that China would seek in some way to reward Russia and basically freeze this the way the Korean conflict has been frozen now for 50 or 60 years. This seems to be what they're really worried about, the, the U.S., in terms of trying to preempt John Kirby, who's going to come on the program a little later today, has been saying but it would not be acceptable. So China's trying to play this peacemaker, but it would not be acceptable for China to come out and say, OK, let's push towards peace right now in this moment, because in this moment, Russia has taken more Ukrainian territory than, obviously, before the invasion. That's right. And uh, that's a, a significant worry. On the other hand, the Chinese have to be a little bit cautious here. And they have to be cautious because they're worried about Europe. They would like to make sure that Europe does not join in any sanctions against China, that they that Europe and the United States do not tighten this bond that has been created since uh, the um, the war began. Mm -hmm. And you know, Europe's a major trading partner for them and is continuing to take a good deal of their technology. So I think they're not going to want to get in too deep. And that's one reason, I think, that they've probably been cautious so far in providing weapons uh, to the Russians. The problem is the Russians don't have very many other places to turn right now. Their only other sources are Iran and North Korea. And obviously, the quality of that is, is not up to what China can give them. Also, David, what it says about China on the world stage, because this comes after China just brokered that di diplomatic deal with Iran and Saudi Arabia. Now we're seeing them try to, to assert themselves in this way, saying you know, that they are this powerful influence when it comes to international order. They would love nothing more, Caitlin, than to play the role that the United States played during much of the Cold War and post-Cold War period, which is the central player that everybody had to come to so that they could organize the world on the basis and the rules that they consider advantageous. And they think the United States did this from the end of World War II in 1945 through to just a few years ago. And that's why it was so important to them to play this role between Iran and Saudi Arabia and would be important to them to do this now. Uh, and of course, the United States not only doesn't want to give up its position on that, but it also is suspicious that China is not the neutral player that it pretends to be. Of course, that's what the Chinese say about the United States. All of it are very interesting optics for Vladimir Putin, especially after just visiting Mariupol, like going to the war zone, David. What do you make of that? It is. I mean, he was doing two or three things there, Don. The first is he wanted to say, this is my territory now. You know, this is an area that uh, obviously they not only bombed and destroyed, but it's an area where they kidnapped many of those children for whom... Uh, he was indicted by the International Criminal Court. I think the second thing he was saying was, the indictment means nothing to me. In fact, uh, they'll continue with all of their activities in Mariupol that they have done until now. So it was a real act of defiance and clearly getting in the endorsement of having uh, Xi Jinping show up for their 39th meeting mm -hmm. uh, since the two of them took over as leaders. That's pretty significant. All right, David Sanger, always a pleasure. Good to see you. Thank you so much.